in Florence, Italy on the 3rd day of May, 1469, a time when Italy was divided into four rival city-states. A baby boy was born to a woman named Bartolomea and a man named Bernardo. The baby boy was named Niccolo di Bernardo de Machiavelli. He grew up with three other siblings, two sisters, and a brother. In Florence, Italy, on the third day of May, although his family was influential, a time they when Italy exactly was divided into wealthy. four rival his city-states. His father was a lawyer, but the baby boy was born from to a woman named Bartolomeo. The Machiavellis placed a high a value on education, Bernardo. so even as a the boy, boy Niccolò found Nicolo joy in reading the Bernardo de Machiavelli. And at the tender age he grew of three, three other siblings, to two sisters, and a brother. Although his family was in Florence, Italy, very on the third day of May, exactly of Niccolò Machiavelli's early life, the his father Italy was a lawyer, divided but into not four much more rival states. He knew Latin well. The a baby boy was placed a high value on education, so even as a boy, and a young man Niccolò found his way to reading from a student of the baby boy in his name, the tender age of seven, and they were sent to school. He was also known to the other sisters, his two sisters, and a brother. They weren't exactly former in Florence, Italy. On the third day of May, 1469, a dull life was divided into wars and rivalries. However, at the age of 18 until he was 26, Niccolò Machiavelli worked for a Florentine banker. At the age of 29, the Florentine Republic reinstated and Machiavelli was made Secretary of Second Chancery. He coordinated relations with territorial, territorial possessions. His brilliance and energy attracted attention to many politicians. A month later, he became secretary to the Council of Ten War as an envoy traveling around Italy and Europe to navigate with potential allies, get information, and do what the Ten War needed done. In 1501, at the age of 33, Machiavelli married Marietta Corsini, and they would have seven children. As Florentine secretary, Machiavelli spent 14 years meeting and observing major political figures. Through his journeys, he picked up principles and examples which he expressed in The Prince. Piero Sordinini was named head of Florentine government in 1502. In 1509, Machiavelli personally supervised a Florentine militia which took a neighboring state of Pisa after a 15-year conflict, but in 1512, Machiavelli's militia was cut down by Spanish troops of Patro. Sordini was forced to resign, and as a supporter, Machiavelli was removed from office, fined, and forbidden to travel outside Florentine territory. A few months after being removed from office, Machiavelli was imprisoned by Based on suspicion, he was tortured using strapado, where his hands were tied behind his back and plunged into the floor repeatedly to extract information. In 1513, Giovanni was elected Pope Leo X. He declared a general amnesty, and Machiavelli was released. After countless attempts to try and prove his support to the Medici, they would have nothing to do with Machiavelli, and his diplomatic career was over. From then on, Machiavelli turned his attention to his writings. On the 21st of June, in 1527, Niccolò Machiavelli died of an illness. Niccolò Machiavelli Literary Works Machiavelli expresses his thoughts on how a prince should behave and thoughts on war in two of, of his most famous books, The Prince and The Art of War. His ideas in The Prince are very controversial, and many people have split opinions on some of the ways he said a prince should act. The ideas on war are actually very well thought out in my opinion. The Prince is divided into 26 sections in which
groups a man who was also known to as Scrunchers the baby boy in his name was his family was a burn under in the art of war Machiavelli have eight and that the baby boy was born in his life since the world was in his life, Paolo Dara, Florence and Leona Mann, although his family was influential, the baby boy was also... Niccolò Machiavelli was a political philosopher and military theorist in the Renaissance era. His most well-known works are the Discourses on Livy and the Prince. The advent of the printing press allowed him to disseminate his political ideas across Europe and to major political figures. Machiavelli believed in political realism rather than idealism. What this means is that it was crucial to study society and how things actually were rather than to philosophize about how things should be in an ideal society. I really like this quote because it epitomizes his reputation for being a realist. First, I will touch on some of the doctrines we are more familiar with. During this time, the families in power, such as the Medicis and Borgias, were behaving quite ruthlessly. Being a realist, he taught effectual truth, basically told it like how it is. He taught that in a world where there is so much that is not good, you must learn how also to be not good. Being in the position of a leader required less than virtuous actions if you are to stay effective. A leader should master true intention and frequently act against mercy and humanity, but not to the point where your people are disgusted by your actions, because power is perpetuated ultimately by the people, not a single, single leader. One of the more famous ideas is that since love and fear can hardly exist together, if we must choose between them, it is far safer to be feared than loved. A good leader must also be flexible with the times or he will be unsuccessful. A lot of people are appalled by his ideas and are only familiar with the end justifies the means type of doctrine. He had much insight into other aspects of politics as well. In the discourses of Livy, he frequently wrote about how he admired the Roman Republic style of government. This being the time of Renaissance, there was a rebirth and revival of arts and painting. Much to his annoyance, the people of his time studied and imitated past art, law and medicine, but not of past governments, monarchies and republics. He also outlines how much he values liberty. Liberty seems to be an anchor value in his political theories regarding a republic. He believes that the best way to achieve liberty is to have a form of government that keeps not only the people but the nobility in check as well. Liberty is not to be confused with security. In order for a people to be completely secure, this would require disarmament of the people. Because of this, a kingdom or government should never ensure full security because security also causes people to become passive. Machiavelli also believed in a strong constitution, which segues into my next point. Believe it or not, our founding fathers studied Machiavelli's work. John Adams is the most well known for professing his appreciation for Machiavelli. Although he quoted him extensively in his defense of the Constitution, he didn't agree with everything. He sifted through a lot of Machiavelli's teachings and discarded what didn't resonate with him and kept what did. As you can see, the foundation of our government was based on what he taught regarding liberty, security, a checks and balances system, the power of the people, and even conquering of other territories with a strong military. Benjamin Franklin was also influenced in part by Machiavelli as well, as he is the one who said those who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. As explained in the book A Companion to Benjamin Franklin, he basically took Machiavelli's teachings and domesticated them by focusing them on conquering commerce, wealth, fortune, and sociability. Last of all, I want to mention none other than Cesare Borgia, who I believe is really in a league of his own. His name is almost synonymous with Machiavelli, they kind of influenced each other. In fact, Cesare Borgia was one of the main characters in his book The Prince. As a military general, he was ruthless and brutal and was even believed to have had a part in his brother's murder as well as murdering his sister's husband out of, je out of jealousy. He sliced the man in half and left him in the piazza for people to see. Afterwards, he treated the people uh, to festivities and even cut taxes and that way they wouldn't remember him as someone horrible. Cesare Borgia is truly Machiavelli's work personified. He referred to Cesare as basically the perfect prince and one that future leaders should mimic. Like Machiavelli says, it's almost impossible to be a good politician and a good person. He has definitely had a large impact on leaders and countries in the past as well as today. Leaders from Stalin to Benjamin Franklin read his works and all took something away.
Also, let's not forget the rapper Tupac Shakur, who released an album entitled Machiavelli.